Well, it's that time of the season. The honeymoon phase is over. The expansion has come and gone. And we've got about another month before the new season kicks off. Now, during these times is when people really start to settle into the sandbox, right? You start seeing what's broken, what's nasty. Two exotics that have definitely come up is, of course, Lorely Splendor, which has suddenly turned everyone into a Titan main. But at the same time, you've got Renewal Grasp, which allows hunters to tank better than Titans. Void 3.0 is also extremely disgusting. And whether you're using Invisibility or Overshield Spam or Crutching on Child of the gods there's a variety of ways to dip into that nasty but sometimes nasty starts to feel a tad bit oppressive right today guys we're going to talk about sandbox some complaints that i have and where we sit currently in the meta and essentially how to fix pvp not just coming here to outline problems no i've got solutions here now first i'm going to kind of take a sandbox approach to this or at least the sandbox discussion on what the philosophy of pvp is supposed to be inside of destiny because we have a lot of working parts right you've got abilities you've got exotics, you've got a ton of different guns and a lot of different archetypes of each of these. But in my opinion, the philosophy for Destiny PvP does need to revolve around skill. And skill breaks off into different branches here, right? Map knowledge, decision making, hand-eye coordination, of course, because this is an FPS game, and the ability to use your primary. See, a primary weapon, given that its name is primary, should be primarily used. But despite all the changes Bungie has made to special ammo and other things, special is still very much a part of our life constantly and with the nerf of shotguns people have now reverted to other special weapons other nastier things and look i'm guilty of it too whether it's been fusion rifles or one shot special weapons ariana's vow lawrence driver you may see the uptick in lord of wolves usage the aggravating thing about pvp right now is the success rate of those that use special weapons primarily part of me wonders why i even use a primary weapon when in fact i could just run around with a special weapon and be just as successful with less stress now the overall special ability usage has gone up also in tandem with our abilities especially void 3.0 Used to in the past, if you would charge right down the middle of the lane, shotgun out or fusion rifle out, you could potentially be killed in time by a primary weapon. But now though, with overshield on hand, well hell, you just give you and your team an overshield and then you rush your opponents. Or invisibility on hand, you could just go invisible, sneak around, wait for the enemy to get close to you and then unload on them with your special weapon. It's become a problem where special weapons were already becoming an issue, but due to new sandbox and void 3.0, these issues have only gotten worse. And let me just say, fellas, I don't know if it's going to get much better. Solo 3.0, Arc 3.0, these things are not going to make the ecosystem of PvP any better. The new meta, despite what people may think, is as skillless now as ever before. And that's essentially the direction that we're continuing to go. Now, granted, I'm not saying that you can't roll up in there with a primary weapon and still pop off and still lock things down and still be disgusting. All I'm saying, on average, due to some of our special weapons being as strong as they are and due to players crutching on certain abilities, at really no fault of their own hell that's the selling point of witch queen right void 3.0 3.0 subclasses hell fellas why wouldn't we use it the problem is is all the issues that we were faced with pre witch queen this only accelerated more with 3.0 and it's not looking to slow down not unless bungie makes some major changes now in terms of ability usage before people just jump up and just have like this blanket statement about ability usage being way too high Look, grenades really aren't that bad. In terms of potency, guys, I would say at the highest level, the most disgusting grenade in Destiny history, outside of maybe sticky grenades, which I know can one-hit kill now, but you have to work to get to that point. Back in the day, though, flat-footed, one-hit sticky grenades would be a one-hit kill. But in terms of, like, the most disgusting grenades in grenade history was, of course, fireball grenades and Viking Funeral back in year one of Destiny 1. Nothing has gotten to that point. For the most part, if you want your grenades to do really, really well for you, placement has got to be on point and rarely does it grant you the one hit kill which is why for the most part grenades are used as a mean of cleanup or used as a prime right priming the target up before engaging them and considering the cooldowns of grenades and such and now that we have dynamic cooldowns i really don't think grenades are in a bad spot they shouldn't be affected in any kind of way matter of fact some of them could even have more potency but of course 3.0 is what's going to aid into that the other abilities supers are actually working as intended supers were getting a little out of hand pre-tier system but since 
since the tier changes, you have supers that people never use inside of PvP that have actually gotten an uptick. Bubbles being used more, especially in game modes like Trials. Wheel of Radiance is being used more. Hell, the other day, we did a Lumina build based on, of course, the Lumina buff that Lumina just got, but also Wheel of Radiance, right? Normally, a super that would just get pooped on in the past, but because of the tier system and because Wheel of Radiance has such a fast cooldown, it's able to compete. I think overall, where supers are, they're also in a good spot. Sure, I would make some tier changes here and there, but for the most part, where Bungie has arranged each of these supers is based on their potency and their ability to get multiple kills in a single super. And that's how they're spacing out the tiers. And I think considering the cooldowns of where these supers are, we're in a very good spot here, super wise. Where the issue is on abilities is actually class abilities. And you got to understand, Bungie, even though class abilities in Destiny 2 has been around for a while, this is still new territory for them. For the most part, Destiny 1, we didn't have class abilities. You had some stuff baked in, like, of course, Shade Step for Hunters back inside of Destiny 1. But there was no Titan Barricade. There was no Empowering or Healing Rift. There wasn't no Dodge on Demand. And trust me on this, Bungie's still pulls data from Destiny 1 to arrive at the numbers they've given us, especially for things like grenade damage, right? They knew that grenades back in Destiny 1 were super potent, which is why a lot of our grenades inside of Destiny 2 are just slightly under the potency that they were back inside of Destiny 1. But class abilities, that's a different area. The only data you can draw from that is from Destiny 2. And it's hard to draw data from that because we've already had so many different metas in D2, whether it was the primary only meta, no special weapons, or whether it was when we had supers raining galore, felt like mayhem constantly. I think for the most part, we had some nails that Bungie has hammered down. Class abilities is just one of those that's just too free. Whether you're getting an overshield, whether you're constantly going in this, whether you're dropping a powering rift giving yourself that 20 percent buff fellas i'm guilty of it too i crutch on it too man i love dropping a class ability and giving myself sun warrior i love sitting in a rift and one shot body shotting people with my sniper i love every engagement on a hunter if things start to get too hot i can dodge my way to freedom now what's the solution on class abilities how do we limit that especially considering this can of course affect pve well bungie kind of has a way of undermining their sandbox changes right they'll come out there and they'll be like yo we're increasing the cooldowns of your class abilities. But at the same time, they'll introduce some 3.0 stuff where all of a sudden you have ways of stacking on stat distributions within your fragments. They can do things like increase resilience, recovery, mobility, which of course is tied to our cooldowns of our associated class abilities. So we have ways of combating this increase in cooldown. It's like, yeah, okay, you add it four or five more seconds here and there. That's okay. We're just going to commit more. And considering that intellect doesn't offer as much value anymore, it's no surprise to see people invest more of their stat distribution into their neutral game. The issue I have with some of the people complaining about Sandbox is people complaining broadly about abilities, but it's not abilities. I'm not complaining about grenades. I'm not complaining about supers. I'm complaining about the always on demand class abilities. And even though Renewal Grass relies on dust filled grenades, dude, what really contributes to even more dust filled grenades is your dodge. You're rocking double bomber. And then on top of that, if you happen to be stacking double grenade kickstart, huh, you've got a grenade every single time. These are all mods, of course, that I love. I love build crafting. All I'm saying is power creep is a real thing and we're definitely in the thick of it and the problem is is that it's only going to get thicker with every single 3.0 introduction of our subclasses these issues are only going to elevate now cross what's your solution because you're just complaining this whole time man you right my solution is very simple a blanket buff all of our weakest primary weapons you know the beautiful thing about lorely over the past couple weeks that i've been playing with it you're walking around with sun warrior right and you're seeing your damage be increased by 20 percent and what I realize is not necessarily how meta it's making every single weapon, although some of them it definitely does make disgusting. It's the archetypes that are the weakest. Then I'm like, wow, this archetype would be great had it just had this 20% buff already added to it. Pulse rifles, for instance, both adaptives and lightweight frames, they need a buff. They do. There's too much disparity in pulse rifles to begin with. When you have on the most lethal end, high impacts like the messenger, which can reach a TTK of 0.6 seconds, no time to explain, also at 0.6 six seconds 
And then you have other pulse rifles like Adaptus with a 0.93 second time to kill? That's a ginormous margin. Bungie, suck that stuff down. Equalize the playing field here. And I know some of you are like, well, it's the pros and cons of it. Adaptus have a good body shot time to kill. Okay. Compared to what? High impacts? No, high impacts have a 1.13 body shot TTK. Where Adaptus are sitting at 1.47. And let's not even talk about lightweights, which have a 1.6 time to kill value in its body shot TDK, making it the most unforgiving pulse rifle archetype in the game. No one is jumping up and going, oh my God, Ogma is disgusting. Adaptives and lightweight frame pulse rifles, they need help. Hand cannons. Hand cannon is a tough one to walk. In the past, a lot of people used to say 140 round per minute hand cannons should be two crits, one body. I'm against that. I think hand cannons are arguably the easiest weapon in the game to use, despite what people may say. Therefore, keeping them at three crits, at least for 140s, is definitely a must. Now, aggressors, I think, are in a pretty good spot, right? They're more forgiving, two crits, one body, and they have a hell of a lot of range. On the high end, reaching up to like, what, 39 meters, depending on your roll. I think they're in a good spot. The archetype that's not in a good spot is, of course, precisions, 180s. Hell, we just got through playing with Frontiers Cried, aka the Chode. Look, it's a phenomenal hand cannon, despite what people may say about it. I think it feels great. Problem is, it's a 180. Two solutions. Some people have offered, what if we just crank up the rounds per minute to 200 rounds per minute? It's a dot. Time to kill wise, you'll drop from a one second TTK to a 0.9. On top of that, the peppering effect of a 200 round per minute hand cannon can be somewhat overwhelming. But let me be real, primary weapons being overwhelming is the least of your concern right now. Given the fact that overwhelming special weapons and class abilities and the common combination the two currently is. Now, if you did want to actually increase the rounds per minute of a precision weapon, you can keep it at 180 rounds per minute, but Bungie, give it stupid range. When I say stupid range, I'm talking 44 meters. Cross, what are you talking about? A hand cannon at 44 meters? That doesn't make sense. Brother, this is a video game where we shoot aliens. If realism is what you're going for, this is not the game for you. But if you give me a 180 round per minute hand cannon that can reach up to 40 meters, maybe even the mid 40s, yeah, it might have a one second time to kill value, but people would use it. I would use it. Trust me, I would use it. But those would be my two options. Just outrageously increasing the range, which I know thematically doesn't make sense, but whatever. Or increasing that rate of fire and leaning more into that peppering. Auto rifles. Auto rifles are actually in an okay place, optimal time to kill wise. But their body shot TTKs, whether it's a high impact or a precision, hell, even an adaptive, they need some more love. Boost that damage, Bungie. Make the weapons more forgiving. And before people go, oh, hand cannons is a skilled weapon. Auto rifles are so unskilled. I can't express how wrong you actually are. Sure, back in the 600 round per minute auto rifle meta where a hard light was blowing its load in you constantly game after game, was it annoying? Yeah, but hand cannons can compete. And again, what makes a hand cannon strong is his ability to peek in and out of cover and land full damage. Auto rifles and other auto weapons, you have to be squared up with an opponent. It's not a peak oriented weapon. Therefore, giving it buffs, especially at least in its body shot TTK, is necessary to add variety into crucible and again that should be something bungie should be striving for is variety not just outliers and also hand cannons is one of the few weapons you can push with effectively and never have any drawbacks right even without icarus if you take to the air with a hand cannon you could still maintain some levels of accuracy i know every sweat player right now is just rolling they're like what no take an auto rifle or scout rifle or pulse rifle and just attempt to be as mobile as you are with a hand cannon you can't at least not effectively not against good players Players, you'll get eight up. Those weapons, you have to keep your butt on the ground for the most part. You have to square up with an opponent that is willing to square up with you and against good players that are playing peak oriented. Nine times out of 10, you'll always lose. The exceptions being, of course, weapons like high impact pulse rifles, which can two tap or two burst at 0.6 seconds. It's amazing. It's just math, fellas. You got weapons that can eat you up quickly. They can win. And that's what I'm saying right here for these weapons. You gotta give them the ability to eat up, not just other primary weapons, but special weapons, especially. Scout Rifles. Where do we even begin on Scout Rifles, man? Look, Scout Rifles is just one of those weapon archetypes that Bungie, I think, is just too fearful to ever make meta. We had that one Mita multi-tool meta back in year one of Destiny 2, and Bungie's like, oh my god, stay away from that. Never again. A couple things that really plague Scout Rifles. A, lack of long-range maps. And we're going to get into the map talk in just a moment, because I have a lot to say about maps. But yeah, if you had more long-range maps available, you would see more Scout Rifles being used. But let me go ahead and just lean into some things here on Scout Rifles. For the most part, I like rapid fires. I think they feel pretty good. 
primarily because they have the most forgiving body shot TTK of 1.4, despite having only an optimal TTK of 0.93. Lightweights are, you know, okay. Precision's terrible. High impacts. High impacts actually have one of the better TTKs at 0.8 seconds, but of course they require three crits. Can I tell you something that plagues all scout rifles for me, outside of maybe lightweights? They feel too damn sluggish. There needs to be a blanket buff in handling for all scout rifles. Why is it that this weapon not only has a worse time to kill than most other weapons, but they also move slower than molasses? Listen, you want scout rifles to have a fighting chance? Make them feel snappy. Blanket buff their handling, make the weapon work fluidly, and then you might actually see people using some of these slow handling weapons. We have that new scout rifle per se. Am I saying that right? It's the Hake scout rifle. Great weapon. Really is. I love the scope on it. Problem? 33 handling. That's its problem. Slower than Christmas. Okay. And look, this is a problem that's really amongst all scout rifles, but definitely affects high impacts and rapid fires surprisingly the most. You saw the rise of Dead Man's Tail, primarily because Dead Man's Tail was not being used like a scout rifle. Everyone can ignore its handling. Funny enough, it actually had better handling than most scout rifles at 55. The hip fire weapon, right? It's really difficult for me to just lump dead man's tail with other scout rifles because of its just behavioral differences it's kind of like last word right even though it's a hand cannon it's like its own thing man dmt is the same thing now of course considering the nurse of dmt people are starting to use it more as a scout rifle but this still doesn't help other scout rifles it's an outlier and what's affecting other scout rifles across the board is a body shot time to kill is too unforgiving and b they feel bad now submachine guns and sidearms are kind of lumping those together are actually in a really good spot like i think submachine guns feel really really good sidearms no lie if sidearms got a blanket range buff they would become the meta i'm not saying that needs to happen i'm just saying they're good sidearms are really really good you've got a few people out there using sidearms and taking advantage of it already depending on the god roll they have but if there happens to be a buff for sidearms in the future it's going to be disgusting i honestly don't think lethality wise or even damage wise they need a buff and some machine guns are also in like that same territory and honestly some machine guns are really invading a lot of the auto rifles considering their range. This is not me saying submachine guns need to get a nerf. I'm just saying both submachine guns and sidearms are actually in a good spot. And it is our other primary weapons that desperately need help. Now I mentioned a second ago about variety and variety is important. Weapon variety is important. Equally as important is maps. Map variety, giving people a different look really shakes things up. Now Bungie's trying to give us a second look, but honestly, it's hardly a second look as their two old maps, both Vostok and Eternity were given to us this past season. And look, I'm all for some longer range maps. And I will say it's working as intended because my weapon usage on those maps does change. The problem? There's not enough maps. There's not even new maps. And we're getting one new map next season. At one time, and we just talked about it here recently, at one time, we used to get boatloads of new maps in a single expansion. The Taken King brought us nine new Crucible maps. What happens when you get new maps is A, no one knows how to play that map. So it's a rush to understand the map, understand the area, find the different choke points, find how to play it, and it really equals equalizes the playing field. On top of that, in your brain, even though you're still playing the same game mode, even though you're still killing essentially the same people over and over again, because you have a new setting though, you're like, yo, this feels somewhat fresh, somewhat new. And that's essentially what happens inside of PvE. We're doing a different dungeon, but it's still a dungeon. We're doing a different raid, but with a different setting. There's a lot of variety in our PvE content, and that variety, even though it is the same things that we're doing, we're killing the same champions, we're battling the same enemies, it feels fresh because of a different setting. PvP has not gotten that. For those that think that PvP feels stale right now, you are in the right in thinking so. Because it is. We're playing on the same maps. It started off being kind of a meme where it was like, oh, we haven't gotten a new map in X amount of days. Now though, it's just sad. It for real is sad. And the fact that we've waited this long for just one new map that's coming up, what the hell? Why is there not more resources being allocated to that? A map can dictate a meta. Bungie, you've got to give us more maps. And I don't care if they're all Destiny 1 maps. You do have an arsenal of maps from Destiny 1 that were really good, but that has to be a priority. Playing the same maps over and over again, especially given the fact that we don't even have a vote up option for our maps, so we can't even choose the best ones. Nothing makes me want to stop playing PvP more than getting the same crappy map back to back games. And to me, it's just blowing my mind that we're even having this discussion, considering map variety seems to be a default for all games and even for Destiny. How we have worked backwards on this, I have no idea. 
idea. There needs to be someone at Bungie right now that's literally churning out maps. His job needs to be map design. I don't even know if Bungie has that guy, but they need that guy. That or just open up something for the community to design maps, like a firefight of some sorts. But that's wishful thinking. I doubt we'll ever get something like that. But in the least, give us back all the Destiny 1 maps. So guys, that is my thoughts on Destiny PvP. And honestly, something PvE players don't want to hear. And I consider myself a PvE and a PvP player. I partake in both constantly. But even as a PvE player, you have to admit that PvP has been neglected. So much so that I honestly think a season of PvP would be acceptable at this point. And maybe necessary. Considering that Bungie actually dedicated an entire season to Gambit. Why not dedicate an entire season to PvP? Now maybe this is going to have something to do with the Iron Banner reworks. Or maybe the comp playlist reworks. But I'm thinking a variety of maps. I'm talking like 10 or 12 maps in a given season. Which I know sounds out of the question. No way in hell cross. It'll never happen. All I'm saying at one point. I would constantly be playing PvP. As soon as I would get out of a nightfall or a raid. I would take that weapon and jump right into PvP and test it out. And have a good time playing with it. I'm not enjoying PvP right now. I would put it right at bearable. And if I feel that way. Man I can only imagine how the average Destiny player feels. So guys that is just my thoughts. We've done discussion videos like this. I know this one is a much longer video. We talked about Gambit here recently and we gave our solutions for fixing Gambit. I know Bungie's trying to find ways to make Gambit more exciting. Whether we get a season of the PvP or really just a season of the core playlist. Like I would honestly be okay with that. I love getting new stuff. Whether it's new strikes, new maps. And those new maps could be new maps for both Gambit and Crucible. Variety is a two-pronged thing. Sandbox and the actual settings where we're playing. It has to feel fresh. It has to feel new. And I can tell you right now, PvP not only has not felt new in a very, very long time, but due to sandbox changes and 3.0, all the issues that we had pre-Witch Queen have only accelerated. And I don't see that slowing down anytime soon. Well, fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.